it's time for another multi-use backpacking item. Hey guys, it's Epic, and today I want to talk to you about another multi-use backpacking item that I have been procrastinating about putting back in my pack, and recently on a hike in September on the Ho River Trail, I was reminded as to why I should still have it in my pack, and that is baking soda. Today I want to talk to you about a few different uses for baking soda and why you might want to consider packing it in your pack. Okay guys, so the first use that I want to talk about for baking soda is to relieve bug bites and bee stings. When I was out on the Ho River Trail in September, I made it about a mile into the trail before a yellow jacket landed on my wrist and stung me. We're not sure what provoked it, didn't set out to make the bees mad, but it did happen. We didn't really put it on camera because we didn't want it to detract from the video out there, but it was making me fairly miserable. The first day it swelled up and it hurt really bad. The swelling remained for the entire trip and the next two days after that it started itching really, really bad. And I had been meaning to pack baking soda back into my kit for a while, hadn't got around to it, and I paid for it. And I really wish I had put it back in. If you're going to carry baking soda for this purpose, the CDC recommends one teaspoon of water mixed with baking soda until it makes a paste and then apply directly to the affected area. The second use that I want to talk about is toothpaste. Yes, baking soda can be used as toothpaste. It can help whiten your teeth. It can help restore pH balance in your mouth. It can help kill bacteria. It can help promote healthy enamel. But it is not a replacement for your toothpaste. You can use it once maybe twice a week to supplement your toothpaste. It is an abrasive, so if you use it too much, it will wear the enamel out on your teeth. Also, it's important that if you're using this to make sure that you do not swallow it, as some people are not gonna tolerate ingesting baking soda. All right, so the third use is pretty simple. It's also related to mouth health, and that's reducing the pain from canker sores. This one is really, really simple. All you gotta do is take half a cup of warm water and half a teaspoon of baking soda, mix it together in a rinse, and then swish it around so you hit the affected area. Once again, not everybody tolerates swallowing baking soda, so make sure that you spit it out and rinse your mouth thoroughly afterwards. All right, so the fourth use is also very straightforward, and this is just for the people who cook directly inside of their cook pots. If you only use your cook pot to boil water, this one really doesn't apply to you. Anybody who's ever made a meal directly inside a pot knows that a lot of times you can get burnt on and stuck on food items in your pot and it's really a pain to clean and you end up using sand or dirt or something like that as an abrasive to clean the inside of your pot. But as an alternative, you can also use baking soda as it's also an abrasive. Okay, so the fifth and final use I have for you today is using baking soda as an antacid. Baking soda is sodium bicarbonate, which is the active ingredient in Elka-Seltzer. I have been known to get heartburn from time to time on the trail, and this has definitely provided me some temporary relief. However, it's important to remember that this is not going to be appropriate for everybody because it does involve ingesting baking soda. It is your responsibility to do your own research and check with your doctor to find out whether or not this is going to be safe for you to use. Well guys, that's all I have for you today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you like what we do, be sure to like and subscribe and hit the bell icon so you know when we make future content. You can also check us out on Instagram, support us on Patreon, and our new website at epicoutdoors.com has gear recommendations and hiker articles. Now get off your butts and go play outside.